What's wrong with Sonic the Hedgehog? Commonly referred to as Sonic 06 or Sonic Next Gen, Sonic the Hedgehog was Sega's attempt at rebooting the Sonic franchise. I stress attempt because they failed horribly. Sonic 06 isn't just a dark smudge on the Sonic franchise, it's also one of the worst video games in recent history. Sega continues even today to proclaim that they'll bring Sonic back to his roots while releasing progressively the worst titles in the series. What Sonic has become today is a far cry from the 2D games that started the franchise, and Sonic 06 is the prime example of Sonic Team's naivety to their now infamous mascot. A game that not only proved to show a lack of understanding for what made previous Sonic titles unique, but it also shows how Sonic Team's take to pushing their mascot is flawed and misguided. Shame to the fans who should have seen it coming, because it all started with Sonic Adventure. Section 1, Sonic Adventure 3 Sonic 06 wasn't the first 3D Sonic game, but it was the first game that really opened the eyes of Sonic fans. It was like a sinking ship and no one seemed to notice until the water was already up to their ankles. Oh, Sonic games are bad, we gotta get out of here. But oddly, the game sold over a million copies and is a platinum hit on the 360. You see, up until this point, Sonic was still very popular. Love them or hate them, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 were enough to satisfy Sonic fans. After the subpar nature of Sonic Heroes and Shadow the Hedgehog, Sega finally came to their senses. That's sort of. The Sonic Adventure games were a good introduction to 3D Sonic games and kept Sega's chili dog loving mascot as a cash grab for the company. In fact, whenever there's a new Sonic game to rip on, there's always been a group of fans ready to scream, oh why can't there just be a Sonic Adventure 3? And the sad thing is, Sonic 06 is Sonic Adventure 3. Although they've received flack as of late, the Sonic Adventure games were a huge deal during their release. No matter what the critics say, the games did sell very well and Sonic fans will tell you that they're definitely fun. Sonic Adventure may not be the best Sonic experience out there, but damn do these rose-colored glasses make it look great! It's sad because even though these games have flaws and stupid characters, they're still not nearly as notoriously bad as Sonic 06. And frankly, that's because somewhere, Sega forgot why Sonic Adventure was at least fun. So here's a list of the core features in the Sonic Adventure games. The ability to play as multiple characters with different abilities and gameplay mechanics, playing through the same story but from different perspectives, levels that are self-contained into one act but made longer through different set pieces, new abilities and upgrades to unlock, and Sonic Adventure 1 has an overworld, which is worth mentioning because it was kind of cool and fun to look around in. You notice that? Sonic 06 has all of these, just not the same. Multiple characters? Yes. With abilities? Yes. But abilities are now purchased from stores, which defeats the fun of having to find them. To purchase these abilities, players need to collect rings through missions within the overworld. A novel concept, but considering the overwhelming amount of items to purchase and how many missions that need to be done, it becomes very tedious. The overworld is also chock full of nothing, bar a few boring NPCs. But we'll get back to that. On the subject of characters, Sonic fans are okay with playing as different characters, and so long as it's not too jarring, it's definitely a worthwhile experience. Minus Big the Cat though, I just, was it a joke? I don't know. At least when characters were contained to their own story mode or levels, players can get used to each character. Even if they have lots of abilities, it feels manageable due to the separation. Fact is, if you don't like the Tails levels, that's fine. It'll be over soon. It's common to have certain aspects of games or moments that aren't as good as others. It's the ebb and flow of game progression, no different than the Water Temple in Ocarina of Time, for example. There are moments that can excite players through fun level designs and more arduous moments that players must fight through in order to get to the good stuff that they saw before. It becomes easier to shrug off the subpar fishing simulator. I'm, why? The point is, Sonic 06 lumped characters together into one level, making it hard to even like the all right moments of certain stages. The sudden switch to another character leaves players with a dislike for the level, which makes them feel dragged out and blurs any redeeming qualities it may have had. At least with Sonic Adventure, the Sonic levels were exciting enough to carry players through the game, hinging on their eagerness to return to the fast paced action. But even the Tails levels in Sonic Adventure 1 and the Knuckles levels to an extent were at least average, and in some cases, is well liked by fans. Sadly however, Sonic 06 couldn't even get Sonic right, and it comes from Sega and Sonic Team trying to enter the new generation of consoles. Section 2 Sonic Next Gen being the first Sonic game developed for the Xbox 360 and PS3, Sonic 06 aimed to welcome Sonic into the beautiful new world of 1080p. It would be the natural progression of any series, even the trailer at the time hyped the game up to no end, and frankly, it actually looked really good. The end product? 
nothing like it. It's been told before that due to time constraints, the game was rushed out in time for the holiday season. A few bugs are one thing, but Sonic 06 feels more than unpolished. With the addition of the Havoc physics engine, Sonic Team was pushing the boundaries of 3D Sonic games. Look at these rings. They're acting like real objects. You know, minus how they just appeared out of nowhere. What? It's these little nuances that really ruin the visual appeal of the game. When Sonic loses his rings, they need to explode out of him, giving a sudden urge of chaos to make players go, Oh crap, no, my rings! Also, with all the physics on the screen, Sonic 06 was ridden with frame rate issues. When you hear Havoc Physics Engine, wouldn't you expect it to be utilized properly? Sonic games back on the Genesis were built around this idea that Sonic was heavily affected by physics, making ramps and loops feel more true to life. Why don't they use this state-of-the-art engine on their physics-based gameplay? Instead, we got scripted scenes in which Sonic slowly jogs around a loop. Which is the next problem. So much of the game feels slow and sluggish. Sonic Run Slow. Sonic the Hedgehog. Slow. The one thing that Sega needed to get right. Not to mention the staple homing attack feels really sticky and hard to use, which is insane because it works perfectly fine in the adventure games. Many of the mistakes, glitches, and shortcomings really come from Sonic Team trying to hastily learn the engine as well as the new consoles. The only character that's remotely entertaining is Silver, as he's got all these telekinesis stuff going on, and it's good use of the engine, it's still slow though. And it's not Sonic! I know I've only been discussing Sonic for this whole video, but shouldn't that be the point? He's the face of friggin' Sega, let alone the game! Sure, the adventure games were built around playing as different characters, but Sonic was still the best part of the game, and Shadow to an extent in Adventure 2, because he was the same thing, and he's sort of the same in Sonic 06, but why does he need to drive a car again? Playing as different characters worked in the past, and was a great way for telling the story, but not in this game. Section 3, Horrible Story! Yeah, there's really no other way to put it. So we got multiple stories to play through. Sonic and Shadow have very few differences in gameplay, and Silver is some new character that fans don't know yet. It's a great start. I won't attempt to summarize the story, there are enough videos out there that really capture the absurdity, but frankly the best way to understand the story is... Uh, just don't. The idea of witnessing a story from different perspectives is fine, it worked in Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 because there were set pieces where characters cross paths. It works, it's exciting. But Sonic 06 tries to meta the entire story with characters all over the map and attempting this avant-garde deep plot with new characters, to which by the way, I don't like my realistic humans in Sonic, it's just... Ugh, Eggman's upper lip. If one was to give a basic plot summary of any Sonic game, it should be simple, but powerful. It's one of Sonic's defining traits over Mario. It is just as simple as Eggman is to Sonic as Bowser is to Mario, but the setting is much more extreme, like the entire city exploding in water or a laser that can destroy the planet. Okay, both are way over the top, but that's fine when it's a quirky cool character like Sonic. I would say it's to be expected, even from Sonic 1. Sonic had to free all the woodland creatures from captivity. Have you even read the comic books? Sonic deals with these big, prolific circumstances, and considering his cool demeanor, it makes Sonic a much more enjoyable, likable character, and the savior of humanity. What does Mario do? He saves a princess. Yay! Sonic 06 doesn't screw up the scale concept of the story, it's fine. If anything, it's too big. The plot twist, the time travel, the gratuitous exposition, and don't even get me started on Elise, it's just too much to keep track of. Where Sonic 06 screwed up was keeping it straightforward. There can be a lot of characters, like Amy Rose. She has a crush on Sonic, so you just throw in some lines about trying to win his heart, and boom! Character development. Shadow had this deep, brooding backstory, but it wasn't deeply discussed until later parts of the game, and considering his larger role in the story, it at least made him more interesting. Keeping character details brief is a staple of Sonic games. You want to learn more about Shadow? You should play Shadow the... Actually, no, don't do that. It's not hard to understand that Eggman is a bad guy and Sonic must stop him. Woohoo! Story! And if you want some deeper character development, keep it simple. Gerald Robotnik's monologue in the final story of Sonic Adventure is about the pinnacle of a good Sonic story. It was dark, evil, but in no way hard to understand. The government busted in and killed his daughter. Death is something that an adolescent audience understands. It's powerful, it's emotional, and ultimately, it's straightforward. Although death as a plot device is not in any way original, at least it's something that Mario never did. It allows for the edgier story, and players can empathize with the characters, such as understanding Shadow's resentment of mankind. Fact is, Sonic 06 went above and beyond what is to be expected of a Sonic game. It still could have worked if there wasn't so much stuff going on. Robotnik found something that can summon Mephilus who wants to bring forth the Rapture. Perfect, 10 out of 10. The thing is, it's not like this. Ergo, it's confusing and it sucks. No one wants to play this and makes the already too edgy for its own good story too edgy for Sonic. And that's saying something. And it speaks volumes from what the developers thought of their beloved mascot. 
there's one thing that all these sections ring true. Nearly everything was building on what worked in previous Sonic games. It plays like Sonic Adventure, they use technologies to up the presentation, and a story that pits the whole world in danger. But how did it go wrong? Being rushed for a release in time for the holidays would be the culprit, but there was so much more weighing on the project. Sonic Team just went too big. After seeing the wondrous praise of the Sonic Adventure games and the critiques made about Sonic Heroes and Shadow the Hedgehog, Sonic Team thought, hey, let's just make another Sonic Adventure game, but bigger and better and HD. They had so much faith in the idea that they called it a new generation of Sonic and was planned to retcon the entire franchise, which is kind of ironic. But it can't be blamed on Sega nor Sonic Team. Okay, maybe you can blame them a little bit. But as fans kept buying and craving more and more Sonic games, Sega couldn't help but just try and appease fans with what they're asking for. Although on paper, Sonic 06 has everything fans could ask for, except maybe an HD Chow Garden, the scope of the game was just far too large and tried to be the biggest it could possibly be. Sonic Team alienated their fans and made a game that was far from finished and far from enjoyable. Sonic doesn't need to push its boundaries. Level designs and game feel come first before you attempt to build an awe-inspiring world that ended up empty, sluggish and confusing. And that is what's wrong with Sonic the Hedgehog. This is a brand new series called What's Wrong With Games, where we discuss infamous games in history and how they turned out so poorly. If you want to support this new show, be sure to hit that like button and maybe say something nice in the comments, and subscribe in preparation for the next episode. Thanks for watching.